Grandma asked Buster to fetch the eggs. So he went to the barn and asked the... Can I open it? Ding dong! What's in the door? What's in there? That's a cow! It's Is a it? moo! <laughs> it's a cow! Moo! No eggs here. Oh dear! Good girl. You want to play with the balls? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. just came, came back from Explorium. It's so fun! I can't believe we live yeah. in a city that's so close to that. Did you have fun in Explorium? No. No? It's so good for a rainy day. It's so fun. Even I have fun around there. It's like such a good place to bring kids. It's And I've been bringing her there since she was probably about 18 months. Have a loyalty card now. My next, my next session is free. Thank you very much. Kids under two go free, which is fantastic because an adult ticket, I think is 15 euro and a child ticket is five euro, but it's definitely worth it. You get a two hour session, which in my opinion is really good. Another great place is if it's good weather to go to Airfield Estate. That's also my favorite. There's animals, there's a playground. Um, you get to see the cows being milked and it's like real educational. And then my other favorite place is Messy Fun in Terenure as well. Now, thank God I'm so lucky I have a car because all these places are about 45 minute drive for me. We're gonna go home now to get some lunch. Now, sorry about the state of this makeup tutorial bird's eye view moment. But anyway, the foundation that I've been using, I'm pretty sure they're cancelled. Guys, please don't cancel me. I'm just trying to use up all the makeup that I have. And it does make me look a bit like Marge Simpson, but I think that's lighting. And it does balance itself out with the blush and the bronzer. But anyway, I use a high coverage matte foundation and then I mix it with the Essence Goldie Drop, Goldie Drops. It's the du dupe for whatever those expensive ones are. I've never used the expensive ones, but this is perfect for if it want to, if you want to make your foundation a little bit more tan and it makes it a little bit more, how do I describe, fluid, better, so better for blending, not as high coverage. So obviously the paler you are, the, use, the less you use, but the more glowy you want to be, the more you use. Does that make sense? Now this isn't my everyday makeup routine, but this is like when I, I'm going on a night out or filming for some reason. It's very high coverage and lasts a long time. So this wouldn't be like an everyday sort of routine look because it can look a little bit cakey in daylight. So it's only for like on screen and nighttime. Then I use the Sosu contour stick in dark. Milani blush there, but I'm also trying to use it up. I think I've had it for about two years. And I use the Rare Beauty liquid blush. I only just got a tester because ages ago because I just wanted to try it out but it actually is so, so nice on my skin tone. Anyway, then the best loose powder and I've used a lot of loose powders. There's no, what's that thing called? Back flash? Flashback? There's no flashback. It's the Hourglass loose powder in Veil. It's like proper airbrush filter vibes all over your face. And then for eyeliner, I just do two in one job. I use the Waterproof Sculpted by Amy Brown mascara, and I use an angled brush to do like a wings sort of liner moment, and then use it as mascara and use it to fill it on my eyebrows. Three in one product, hello. And then put on the mascara, and then for my lip liner, this is my most asked question, I just use a brown eyeliner pencil. I've also put, see so you dab a little bit of loose powder underneath your winged liner to make it last longer. And then for like a minute, you bake, that's what it's called, you bake underneath there and then sweep it away at the end, the very end. And that's my makeup routine, guys. Thanks.
hot food too. Like, um, but it was like in Strasbourg. Bailey's hot chocolate as well. I was researching for a podcast because I'm interviewing a representative from the women's women for election and I was looking into countries that would be a model of exemplar of gender equality and number one in the world which it has been number one in the world for 12 years is Iceland and because I was explaining to Jason so much we don't have internet this week so we had, we were forced to speak to each other a lot I was explaining this to Jason because half of their cabinet are women they've closed the gender pay gap by enforcing legislation for companies to prove that they're paying each gender equally and they've also introduced an encouragement from younger children in early childhood development and in preschools to act out in ways that would be diminishing a gender stereotype so this program has obviously been developed by experts in human development and neuroscience scientists and because I was talking about it so much I got it was getting it on my for you page so when I was away this weekend I saw a TikTok come up about Iceland and how they were encouraging preschoolers to act out in the inherent characteristics that would be associated with their opposite gender for example the young girls the boys and girls would be separated and the girls would be encouraged to take risks and be not be bold but like be adventurous and build things and that sort of stuff whereas the boys will be taught to be caring and looked at look after each other and focus on group orientated activities and that's obviously to do with the difference of brain chemistry when a boy and a girl is born but then obviously the way that we're conditioned encourages that behavior and like you because of neuroplasticity that behavior can be changed from this tiktok i was like oh this is fantastic it's been promoted online but every single comment i saw underneath it was negative and i thought that was interesting because and it's not as if iceland is like an egalitarian utopia for women but it's more even just the suggestion of trying to diminish gender inequality offended people that aren't from Iceland. I would really recommend looking into Iceland because even though they have sort of succeeded and paved the way for the rest of the world and in comparison to the rest of the world they're leading the way in terms of gender equality but even still there's a huge percentage of women that will experience domestic violence and a huge percentage of women that will experience sexual abuse. Even with those systematic protections in place for women it is still falling short in terms of social conditioning and misogyny. Misogyny is still rampant and violence against women is still rampant.